Wait, do you want me to gaslight you while we play this, or do you oh, want me to gaslight me confirm for sure. the guesses? No, gaslight me the whole time. Oh, okay. So, whatever. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Jenelyn. I'm the host of the show In Between Bites. We have Augie Bello as our guest Hi. today. <laughs> I play the saxophone, I write songs, and I post a lot of social media content. Um, and yeah, and I'm super excited to be here. Thank you for having me on the show. Of course, thanks for coming on. So, the first part of the show, Yes. we brought you pizza because you have a song called Pepperoni Pizza. <laughs> Thank you and so much. the game here yes. is, I have a bunch of different countries okay. and the kind of pizza that they've decided to make. Yes. It might be against like... Sacrilegious yeah, kind of? Yeah, basically. I'm down. But you have to match them just based off of vibes that you get from the country. So. Okay. Okay, cool. Oh, well, this is fun. Okay, cool. Explain the thought process here. Okay. Okay, that's an easy one. Half emu <laughs> and half pepper kangaroo. And I picked up Australia at the same time. Australia kangaroo. I, that's just my guess. Wait, do you want me to gaslight you while we play this? Or do you oh, want me to gaslight me confirm for sure. the guesses? No, gaslight me the whole time. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? I'll just give you that one. Okay, you'll give me this one. Okay. <laughs> Cicadas? That's crazy. <laughs> It's got to be good, though. Yeah, I'm they just... said it was crunchy. They that said was it was crunchy. But yeah. it goes down the throat not very well. Uh, they said. They yeah. said being you because you've definitely had it. Oh, yeah. It's actually my favorite. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Costa Better Rica. than pepperoni. Japan. Ooh. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I don't. I, we might have to stop the interview at this point. <laughs> Better than pepperoni. Missouri. Okay. My roommate, uh, well, my former roommate was from Missouri. I want to find that one right now. I'm going cicadas. I could see people from Missouri eating cicadas. What the? Or cicadas. Uh, Why do you say that? They just seem like they like bugs. <laughs> <laughs> they have nothing better to do. They're so bored. They're <laughs> off of the tree. They're like, Shout out to my roommate. I mean, it's not his fault. You know, that's just, you can just see it. Uh oh. I'm gonna go in Maybe India. Maybe you should let the wind choose for you. You're right. <laughs> it's probably the wind is definitely the more educated cards. than I am on this, to be honest. Okay, I'm gonna go with banana curry. Associate. Do you eat Indian food? I have had some Indian food. I have acid reflux though, <laughs> and a lot of Indian food uh, is a bit spicier. So okay. I like once in a while I will treat myself to it. Okay. What do you think you're gonna get? Like, how many correct answers do you think you're gonna get? I'm hoping for like 60%. Okay. A little bit better than half. Okay. Pickled ginger, minced blood. And what does this say? Paneer. Paneer. I don't even know what that is. I don't make money like that. <laughs> <laughs> green. All right. Let's go green peas. Let's go Missouri. You know, I, I was gasoline you. Cicadas is from Missouri. It is Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. Okay, I'm thrilled now. Coconuts. Okay, coconuts feels like tropical, and Costa Rica feels tropical to okay, me. Okay, you're correct. So I'm going to go with that. Finally some solid reasoning. Right? That, that was, was good. good. Yeah. That was nice. Okay, let's go pickled ginger, I feel like, would be in Japan. But squid ink. Squid ink. You know, like, which countries do you think that fits, though? I feel like that's more of a European country thing. Squid ink? Oh no, you're like really gaslighting me here. I'm well, not gaslighting you, I'm helping you right now. <laughs> if I was gaslighting you, I'd be like, yeah, definitely. Oh, Sweden, you're right, right. Missouri. I don't know what makba is. That's like the name of the pizza. That's the name of the pizza. Oh, makba, that sounds like Ikea furniture. So let's put that under Sweden. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Makba. Makba. Does that, that sounds German. Makba. I could say that angrily. That's definitely German. And well, what then, if it's Russian? It could be. Oh no. <laughs> what if? India's wrong. India's wrong. Damn me. Okay. Okay, you have a max one minute left. One minute. Okay. Is Japan wrong? Uh, Japan is wrong. It's wrong. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is with India. That's India. Because paneer is an Indian food. That's why I asked. Oh, <laughs> classic. Because it's obvious. Paneer See, now is I'm very... like, I don't know when you're gaslighting and when. <laughs> okay. The I'm glad I got this for my own. Be really bad, now you're not gonna know what that means. Okay, you have no time left. Oh. <laughs> this is correct. Costa Rica and coconut. Okay, good. All the ones in the book are correct, so I think you have four right now. This one is wrong. 
This one is wrong. All of these are wrong. So you got 50%. Hey, I'll take 50%. <laughs> you failed. <laughs> <laughs> but you weren't that far off from okay. your goal, so it's okay. Okay, so Makba is... Makba is Russian. Russian. I hear it. Yeah. I can see it. And then the green peas is Brazil. <laughs> and banana curry is Sweden. Wow. <clears throat> and yeah, please. Yes, I'm going to take a bite of this pizza. Um, well, but as you as you eat the mm. slice, this part of the show is called Palatable Palettes. Yes. And in between bites, we'll be auctioning off the artwork created by you, and we'll give fifty percent of the proceeds to a community fridge or food bank of your choice in New York. Amazing. Yeah. So, is there a prompt, or is it just the prompt is draw what you hope or believe the future holds for you, and it can be abstract. It doesn't have to be oh, literal. Oh wow. Literal. Yeah. I'm like gonna have an existential crisis here. <laughs> <laughs> but we have the best of the best for markers and crayons. Mm. You know, Crayola is like right. brand name, and then the other shitty brand is generic. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? It's like super waxy. Uh huh. It's like rose art or something. I see. And this is what I appreciate about you guys is there is none of that rose art. There's, this is a create cr Crayola event. Yeah. You know, I only participate in Crayola events. I feel like I can be in like preschool again, which is nice. Honestly, that's what we wanted. Yes. That's what we're tapping into. <laughs> that's the goal. Okay. So you mentioned in previous interviews that you were always drawn to music and you try to play every instrument possible as a child. Yes. Before eventually going to classical music, then saxophone, classical, and then like jazz. Yes. So what makes jazz special to you and like why the saxophone, I guess? So with growing up, I did a lot of classical music, as you said. And it was really helpful for getting technique and really becoming comfortable, like fluidly playing the whole instrument. But the biggest issue, it's very possible that it's ego, um, but there was a feeling while I was playing classical music or playing in a marching band or playing in an orchestra that like, if right now, like let's say I had a concert that night, right, where I'm playing in an orchestra or, or concert band, if I was murdered, right, and then everyone went to that concert later, that shit would sound the same. Oh. That shit would sound the same. And I was like, man, like, I'm playing this clarinet part, and there's someone to the left of me playing the same part, and someone to the left of her is playing the same part. And I was like, man, this concert's going to be the same if I disappear right now. You actually thought that as a I, a, I thought that. I was, like, man, I was like, man, I don't feel special at all in this setting. Wow. <laughs> But in the jazz band, I realized like, okay, I have a solo at this part where I get to create something on the spot. And I'm the only one playing this part. There's no one else. So like, if I was murdered <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> this concert, money. they'd be like, oh man, like wasn't something, right? Like something's gone from this event here. So I kind of liked that like with jazz and like playing in a jazz setting, I felt like there was more, it was more important for me to actually be there and I was felt like I was more of a critical role. So I kind of leaned more towards jazz growing up and then like, it was kind of the creative element of it where I could create something on the spot too um, with improvisation. And then for me like, my favorite music is like pop, hip hop, R&B. So now it's kind of like the goal of like incorporating those jazz um, fundamentals, which I've learned and which I worked on at New School, and um, kind of bringing them to music where people wouldn't ordinarily hear it. You know, so that's kind of how that's the story of of my warped. Uh, how old were you when you like had that <laughs> thought process? Though, because that is a lot of ego. That's that, a lot. That is a lot. I guess. I mean, I. How did you recognize it early? Because now you're here and you got to do what you like to do. Yeah, I, honestly, I think that I first recognized it when, honestly, from the second I saw music, because my sister, I started with the piano, and the first time I really saw the effect of music on others was when my sister started taking piano lessons. And she'd play, like, like, in her first year of piano lessons, she'd play, like, the worst version of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, but the whole family's gathered around and excited and, like, it brought the mood up. So I was like, oh, I'd love to be able to do that. And then like as time went on, it was like, I want to feel important to the music without a group mentality that people who play in orchestras and bands have, like that would never happen. Like if you look at my 
um, elementary school yearbook, it says future occupation is like musicians. So. I actually can't get over the fact that you actually had such a deep thought process. <laughs> you were like, well, I want to be the star and I want to feel needed. I, yes. Like there was like consciousness already yes. developing. There literally was like a point in time where I like was like, man, like I don't feel, I don't feel crucial to, to this this concert. Well, also seeing your sister, you're like, I don't have to be, be, even be good either. As long as I'm just there. As long as nobody else can exactly. play like me. <laughs> I don't have to be good as long as no one's next to me. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm the guy. That's crazy. <laughs> That's so true. I'm just curious though, were you naturally good at music like the first time you played the piano and then picked up other instruments or did you have to practice a lot? I was lucky to have like A, like a family who supported me and like encouraged me to do these like to keep going with music and then B I also had um, like a drive within myself to get better and expanding my kind of arsenal um, internally like your personality really shows out in your the music that you create so my personality is really outgoing and I try to make people laugh and have fun or smile or like let's say I'm going through a hard time and I want people to be able to resonate with that what instrument do you think would also capture your personality? I'm also, like, lately I've been singing a lot and writing a lot of songs. Because there's, like, again, like, with the love of pop music, I feel like the best, most relatable sound is the, is the human voice and lyrics. So, like, if I can tell a story with lyrics and, and really connect with people, then that would probably be my... Other things. It comes back to that again. <laughs> it does come because back. Because the voice is still unique to you. Yes, yes, and that's the greatest thing about like singing and and. Do you yeah. have a favorite lyric that you've written? I'm trying to think. I mean, literally today before I came to the shoot, I was working on a song called Brag, mm. and I was happy with the bridge. I was really happy with the bridge. Um, I'll give you guys a preview of it here. Oh whoa! Exclusive, okay, yeah. exclusive, exclusive, <laughs> and this is a demo. But uh, feel free to air it. Um, okay here. Okay. Okay. Okay, here comes the bridge. I'll be honest, didn't know that I was lit on, but you promise just be honest, it's a dead cause. You broke my heart, should have broke yours too. So, so glad to give up on you, cause you were never really ready for a new start. Only hope and jealousy would win it all hard. Now I'm laughing, smiling, cause one thing's true. Soon he'll be giving up on you. Did you record this? I recorded this earlier today before coming here. That's actually really good. When is it coming out? <laughs> this is coming out probably in like three months. Oh, if okay, I can so finish that it right. will come out before then. Yes. So it will be an Augie exclusive. Yes, an Augie exclusive. Please put it in there. <laughs> I'm like really excited about that one because I've just been producing it. and I have one more actually. I wrote a song called Evergreen and it's about, um, it's about Aiden. Uh, we've been dating for like a year mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm cle I feel like this is you, Is that why you're drawing? Cheese? Yes, that was my oh. first thought. I love how I'm like drawing about oh. the song that I'm thinking about and I'm not wow. even mentioning it um, But I w when I was on tour with uh, Teddy Swims, there was one song that we did the song was called life and every line spelled out life uh, love isn't for everyone is like the start of the song and then each stanza is spelling life now for me I was like oh I should try to do that with Aiden's name oh. but I, I so I didn't want it to be the whole song but like it starts off and evergreen doesn't ever need a e d e n wow. and then like later in the song it's basically a story that I'll be there throughout like evergreens are always there so I, I'm proud of the lyrics you also mentioned in a different interview that as a child you would see musicians perform in the subway. Yes. Now that you're a rostered performer with music under New York with the MTA yes. and were nominated for the Writer's Choice Award, yes. did you ever think that, you know, as a child, this was exactly what you were meant to do? So, when I was growing up in Long Island, we would come into the city every once in a while and I would see these subway performers and, like, these, like, People in New York who are in the train station are going somewhere. Yeah. Like they. I actually saw you performing in 
uh, Herald Square. Oh, no way. With Aiden. Oh, really? Yeah, and I sent a small video. It was super That's blurry. So I was going somewhere, so I didn't stick around, but I saw yes. the crowd there. Uh -huh. And I, I texted Shirley, and I was like, yo, I just saw them. They're no busting way. right now. Yeah. That's so funny. But, like, that's the biggest thing is, like, if someone is in a rush and they get to hear you for a second and it brightens their day, that's huge. Like, if you can get someone to stop and, like, take a pause from, like, the New York bustle of, like, I need to get somewhere and, like, chill for a second, like, that's a huge trade-off. So, when I was coming to Long Island as a kid, I would see this guy, this subway performer, his name is G. Will. And he's this amazing guitar player and singer. Um, and he basically would just like do that. So I saw New York City as like a stage that's always open. And as soon as I moved here, it was like a goal of mine. It was like a ne necessity. Like, all right, if I'm living in the city and I want to make it as a performer, this is like a 20, this is a 24 seven stage that like I can decide right now, I want to go out and like do something and make it happen. But it's like a, it's like another measure of like special, specialty and uniqueness. Cause yes. then it's like if they stop, you're like, oh, I did something right. And yes. They won't forget me today. Exactly. And, and, and if you're working on music to release, mm. you can really use that as a testing ground mm. for like a new a song. Audience. Yes. Mm. You can, you can use it. Cause no one is going to be more honest than people who like don't know you and don't really care. Their, their objective was not to be there to listen to you. Sometimes it's a selfish thing. I'll be sitting at home and be like not in the best mood and I'll be like if I can see other people like being lifted up through what I love to do that will like lift me up. Um, so I kind of owe a lot to the subway and again like a wow. test ground for music. I don't think it's necessarily selfish though. But it goes both ways. <laughs> it goes think. both ways. There's a lot of times where I go out mm -hmm. and like I did the same thing yesterday. Like I, I played my heart out in the subway the day before and people were like noticing and caring. But there's some days which no one's going to look at you and no one's going to care that you're putting your heart. But that's what you like about it, right? Yes. It's so authentic. That's kind of like the edge that New York has over a lot of mm -hmm. cities is like there's a stage that's waiting for you at all times and like whether you choose to do it or not is const is is really fully in your hands how do you typically approach a an actual stage then not just a subway but like at a yeah. venue or when you're touring with teddy yes how is that like how did it differ then i guess from yeah MTA? so i would say like an actual stage the, the mindset is super different so in the subway i don't typically get to play with my band so whenever I'm with my band I just feel like my playing is better and like I have their energies pushing me forward versus just a static track that I know every second I know what's gonna happen when I'm playing with my band or I'm on a stage or with Teddy's band if I play a line and the guitar player catches it he might play it back to me and then he'll play something that I wouldn't have thought of and then I'm playing it same with the drummer the piano player, the bassist, so it's a completely different... Um, well, you're communicating. We're it's communicating. It's like a dialogue. Exactly, versus dialogue. just like a, a self-creation moment. There's like mm -hmm. a lot going on, so I definitely prefer playing with um, playing with a band. So if you don't have any expectations when you go into Subway and you're performing solo, and then you yes. talk about how crucial the band is, for when you perform on stage, how was the national anthem then at MSG? Oh my god. Because there is expectations, right? They're gonna measure oh you up god. to this song that, you know, everybody knows. Of and course. you're performing alone. So how was that? I was so so excited to <laughs> um, to perform because it was my first time performing at like a stadium since, you know, working with Teddy. Mm -hmm. And it was on my own merit which felt really exciting for me. I was super nervous because for me like that platform is in really important getting to play for like you know I think it's like 18,000 people so I can do the national anthem the way that like everyone knows it to be or I can like put a bit of myself in there and like challenge myself so what I decided to do is like play the last part of the song, like up the octave in a really high register. 
if I went to just do the national anthem normally, I wouldn't have been worried at all. But literally at the sound check, the like top note da, 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 cracked and was awful. At sound check. Yes. Oh so I was like. So you really were debating. Your I was really debating it, and I was basically like, like big risk, big reward. Like if I do nail it, then like no one has done that before, and. He killed it, but also like I'm playing the saxophone in the middle of an ice skating rink and like when it's cold It's so much harder to play high notes on the saxophone for some reason because the cold kind of shrinks the metal yeah. and makes it tougher So I was just super nervous because I was challenging myself and luckily it went Really well. So with thinking of us, that's how you came out as gay. Mm -hmm. Were you, I'm just curious, like were you scared or nervous when you put out the song or did you feel like everybody that you loved already knew? The only people that like I really loved in my family that knew was my immediate family. My mom, my sister, and my father. In my mind, I was gonna use this song in this video as like basically a way to not have to tell every single person in my family mm -hmm. and not have to see their reaction to it. Um, so for me, like I was just nervous because it's not something that many people would expect for me. And I remember like when I dropped the music video, that next like 24 hours, I just like, I think I turned my phone off and I like left it somewhere. Cause I was like, I don't, I don't want to see. And then when I turned it on, I was like pleasantly surprised with like how much support there was from everyone, you know, a lot of my, fans and then a lot of family um, you know everyone has been super supportive um, which has been nice the only thing that I looking back on sort of regret is like there's people in my family who have known me from like day one and I feel like I could have told them before telling everyone at once like as like a respect thing Almost they like might, you owe it to them because they've I owe, yeah, like kind like of like It's like, like a, a designation of, I know you would understand. Yes, yes, like, like, like you are not the same as just anyone else who might find out through this. So, um, but again, it was my way of just like letting people know, letting them be home, digest things. And then when I see them, there isn't like, like they've already done their digesting. It's not me telling them and then watching them digest it or like, you know, have their have their moments of, you know, maybe doubt or whatever, so. But I was excited to finally do it and the reason I did it was like, finally dating somebody that I was like excited about and that I wanted to, that I wanted to show off and like all, all the amazing things that he's doing. Yeah, I mean like, just coming out is really hard, so. It's yeah. that you gotta do it in a way that was calm for you. Cause I actually yes. get it. Cause like, um, I came out as like, I don't really, it's like coming out, but yeah. I I feel very like gender neutral. So yeah, I yeah. identify as non-binary. Oh wow. And people don't really like, expect that cause I dress more on the femme side. Yeah. But I came out through like a Teen Vogue piece. Oh wow, that's amazing. And I never amazing. sent like texts to my parents or anything. Yes. I kind of just sent them the link to the article and there I was like, go. you know, have fun, That's read super it. similar to and, me. Yeah, exactly. So I get it. We're yeah. kind of like, you're like, this is who I am. Yeah. And I'll let you take it as you want to. Exactly. But I was wondering, like, what do you typically write about now? And has life become any bit easier now that you've kind of more established yourself as an artist and become more recognized? Because I think yeah. a lot of people will now associate you with New York. You're kind of like New York Nico, but you play saxophone. <laughs> so, I really appreciate right? that. That's a, that's a huge compliment to be New York Nico on saxophone. No, honestly, the great thing about coming out and being honest is that, like, how do you write a love song if you are hiding so much? Or how do you write a heartbreak song if you're hiding so much? Basically, I'm working on an album right now and there should be four songs on this album which are about kind of being led on. It's one of them. Demo. That's the exclusive <laughs> demo. Being led on. And then there's another four songs about about meeting Aiden and like how like life has brightened up. So I'm like excited for this project because it's like a whole kind of over a year of my life. It's a story. Yeah. And it's yeah. also nuanced because you show exactly. the negative and the positive of like being connected to your feelings. Okay, so for our closer yeah. for the show, we're basing this off of your song called Tunnel Vision because we want you to have tunnel uh, vision right now. Yes. And create a really quick song. Yes. Aiden has sent a prompt. He oh, wow. said, 
I'd love to see Augie write a song about the struggles of living with his curly hair. So whatever <laughs> vibe you think you can channel right now for that prompt. Oh boy. Go for it. Of my curly hair. Okay, well let's do it. So we'll start like in the morning, okay? This will be like my progression. It's gonna be like morning, just showered. Um, it's a little bit humid. What kind of shampoo did you use? What type of shampoo I use, and then uh, bed again. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was so, so fun. Thank you guys again for having me. Cut. Oh, it was still rolling? I didn't even know. I, I like That's the hug, good. I like oh. the deep breathing. Oh. I'm so sorry. I'm very no, intense. I think that was that was perfect. I'm a very yeah. intense writer. Here, sell it with the crayon now. Yeah, it was so cold. You said it. Okay. Oh, I'm so dead. <laughs>